So another thing I want to talk about is if you are in a market to look for a microscope, these are the things that you should look for. So this is very clear in my mind right now because I'm in the market, I'm actively researching and almost pulling the trigger on a microscope. I'm probably going to buy one in the next few days. So obviously the number one goal for a microscope, it has to give you magnification and illumination better than a 4.5 or 5x magnification loops. So when you look and judge microscopes, it's, it's important to either sit down and look through it to see if it's clear, if it's bright. As far as the lenses goes, there's different small details that you can change. And I won't talk into a lot of detail, but in some cases, a lot of microscope offers apochromatic lenses where you get true colors or they have a different fee geometry to the lenses that allow you to see things with a better depth of field. So in some cases, you have high magnification but your depth of field is so limited, it's very hard to see and move your microscope or the patient in the exact position. But all in all, as far as the clarity, it just has to look clear enough for you and offer a light that is good. Now, in most cases, uh, the lights these days are LEDs. That's like the best mix of brightness, color, and longevity. The older one, halogens, they, they broke down very quickly, weren't as bright, and then if you want the more ex expensive and brightest, the xenons, those, those are probably not worth it. Uh, so with anything, I would just stick it simply, look for an LED lights, and truthfully, that's what may be the only one that manufacturers offers these days. So number two, what I look for is a microscope that fits you ergonomically. I mean, part of the big reasons, in addition to the magnification and illumination, is to be able to work in more of an ergonomic and comfortable position. Now with loops, even if you're using an easy case, you still have this heavy thing on your head, it's weighting down, and you often have to tilt your head and neck, and maybe even of your upper back to be able to see. Now the microscope can be adjusted to a position where you're always upright and looking forward. That's what's better for your neck, for your back, and your arms as well. Now here's the tough thing, adding features on a microscope that are better for ergonomics are one of the most expensive options out there. And here are the few. The first is the working length. The working length is your distance between what you want to see and the microscope. There's an ideal distance where the microscope will be in focus. That can be changed in a fixed manner where you just buy the most common is either 200 millimeters or 250 millimeters fixed. Now, if you want an option to go beyond just fine focusing, fine focus is basically tiny adjustments up and down of the objective lenses. If you want full on adjustment on the focal length, let's say in a range from 200 and 300, a variable focal distance, you have to pay pretty much consistently across all manufacturers $3,000 for that ability. It is very useful, but it is very expensive. And my recommendation for that is unless you have different providers using the same microscope or your working distance really do vary that much, truthfully, I would try to stick and find that working distance that you work best, whether it's 200, whether it's 250, or even 300. The other expensive part to the ergonomics is the tilt of the binoculars. Pretty much in all baseline manufacturers of microscopes, no matter what level brand they are offers a fixed binocular where that's the cheapest option that you have and ergonomically it's tough um, especially when you have a fixed focal distance you really need a binocular that you're able to adjust and adjust between quadrants of the mouth between uh, upper and lower in the binocular there's kind of two options you have you have the tilt so most if it's Six is about like 45 degree angles and being able to adjust that is very important for your ergonomics. Uh, the other add-on that you have to pay is an extender where you can move further away from the microscope so you don't have to lean forward. So all in all again you're looking at another 
$3,000. So you kind of have to unfortunately play your budget, your importance of root canal therapy. Obviously, if you're an endodontist that are doing full time and own in practice, it's worth getting both of those options ergonomically. So number three, this leads me to another conversation and that unfortunately is cost. This is probably the biggest barrier for entry in a purchase of a microscope. From back in the day, I think the cost was even higher, but right now it's actually not too bad. Still high, but not too bad in a manner because there's a lot of competition now uh, in different parts of the world. I think early on there's a big dominance in Zeiss, obviously, which is well deserved. Uh, global, which, which is kind of the cheaper alternative. Uh, I think right now they're becoming more on the expensive end. So there's another set of microscope manufacturers that are selling lesser expensive microscope, and they're still expensive. If you're looking at the lowest being around $8,000. And we talked about different options so far, whether it's the sort of light where it's the different sort of quality of lenses or the ergonomics, those could really change the cost of that baseline model from a $8,000 unit to a $15,000 unit. We'd even talk about the options of photography or videography. And when you tack those on, that's another like $3,000 with a beam splitter, with an adapter to the beam splitter to adapt to whichever camera that you have. In the end, the cost that you're going to look for is going to be at least like 11,000. And that's where I'm at right now. I've zeroed in on a company. I don't want to reel it quite yet. I want to hold on to the name uh, because I'm still going through the process of deciding on the purchase. And this is part of the Vlogmas set of videos. I hope I'm able to continue and update you on what I choose and how I like it. So let's stay tuned. I hope you like these series of videos. If you have questions, please ask in the description below. And that might even sway me to different topics in the next coming days. Thank you. We'll check you soon.